Okay, so now we're going to look at rotary ev evaporation. So we've got this solvent, and we've got our compound in the solvent. We need to get rid of the solvent. So we use a rotary evaporator, such as one of these, and we're going to place our sample in the flask. The flask goes on this end here, and it will be clipped. And essentially what we have is a distillation setup. So we have the flask here, we use the water bath to raise the temperature, and then we have the vacuum over here. We have a condenser here to cool the solvent that's coming off, which will then be collected in this trap here. Over here, at this point, we have a tap which allows us to bleed air into the system. So in order to set it up, first thing we're going to do is make sure we switch it on. And here we can then set the temperature. Essentially, for most organic solvents, we're going to want 40 degrees. That would do very nicely. And then we're going to turn on the cooling water. So it doesn't want to be too fast. running through the system. You do want to make sure that the receiver flask is empty. It should have been emptied by the last person, but just check that, because the last thing you want is to, if your compound accidentally bumps and is pulled up over into this flask, you don't want to be contaminated with anything anyone else has been using. So we're going to pour our compound into the flask and then we're going to carefully clip the flask, flask in place. Okay. Be particularly careful with heavy solvents such as DCM because they are very dense and that can cause this to fall down. So we're going to make sure that this tap here is open and then follow the vacuum through round and we're going to turn on the vacuum and we can hear that now. So we can hear the vacuum hissing away and now we're going to start to rotate the flask and we're going to turn it till it's about two-thirds sort of one o'clock position keeping our hand underneath here just to make sure that it can rotate gently against that and it's not going to fall in. And then we start to close the tap. So we're turning that tap so it's closing and keep an eye on that solvent so we can see it's starting to evaporate. So this is dichloromethane which has a very low boiling point anyway. It's a boiling point of 45 so it doesn't take much. And now you can see We've got the tap closed, this is rotating, it's bubbling away nicely, and you can see on the glass there's condensation starting to form from evaporation. Once that's going like that, we then slowly use this to lower the flask just so the bottom portion now is in the water bath, you don't need the whole flask in the water bath, just that bit. And we can see it starting to evaporate. We can turn up the speed. The reason why we're rotating the flask is to ensure that it increases the surface area as the solvent's rotated and flung out by centripetal force around the sides of the flask. And it also means that as it's evaporating, it also stops it from boiling and bumping and that's when essentially it jumps from this side over to here because the vacuum's built up and the solvent explosively um, evaporates very quickly. So we're going to leave that to evaporate nicely. It's there. Evaporating away.
Okay, so we've got to the end of our evaporation. You can now see that everything's all the solvent has evaporated, everything's gone. And slow that down, stop, and then we're going to raise it up out of the bath. Next thing to do then is to open this tap and also help release the vacuum. And we can go and switch the vacuum off. Once the vacuum's off, we then are going to unclip, remove, and then you'll want to give the flask a wipe with some blue roll in order to have a dry flask. One very important thing to remember is that if you are preparing a sample, is to weigh the flask before you put anything into it. And that means you can weigh the flask again afterwards with no weight and you can get the weight of the solid that's in your flask. Final thing to do then is switch off, switch off, and then take your the receiver flask, unscrew, remove this, and if there's any solvent in here, there isn't in this case because DCM is very low boiling and the house vacuum is very high, it's a very good vacuum, but it's to make sure you do empty anything that you've collected in the receiver flask out of here. Put this back on, tighten the screw, and there we go. You've got your compound.